Uh, yesterday we started a little bit, and I I I I, I sort of changed to another story. But here's a story about the Baal Shem Tov, and what exactly was the merit that the Baal Shem Tov's parents had in order to give birth to the Baal Shem Tov? What's the merit? So there's two stories that are told. Well, there's there's several stories that are told, but here's two of the shorter ones, and it could be that all three are true. One of the stories is that <clears throat> the Baal Shem Tov's father was called Rabbi Eliyahu. Yeah, Eliyahu. Eliezer, right? Was it Rabbi Eliezer? Wow, that's terrible. I forgot. If it, I think maybe Rabbi, it was Rabbi Eliezer. And the one day, so, so it was a big question if, if the God wanted to bring the soul of the Baal Shem Tov into the world. But he had to find someone that was really a good receptacle for this. So it seemed that this Rabbi Eliezer, he was the one that was going to be, but God wanted to test him. So how did God test him? So <clears throat> he sent on Shabbat someone to his house. He lived in a very simple house, sent on Shabbat. A person came in on Shabbat. A Jew came in carrying a a suitcase, and a suitcase, a backpack, which is forbidden. You can't carry in a, in a public domain, come from a public domain to a private domain. And he came in, and he was a very sort of a crass person, and he was very... <clears throat> and the Baal Shem Tov's father, which any normal person would just sort of kick him out, but he, he said, uh, come in. Obviously, it must have been with the agreement of his wife, and they fed him, and they took care of him. The whole Shabbat, this person acted in a very... Uh, unappreciative way. And nevertheless, he treated him as though he was the most honorable of guests. And afterwards he left. And then Elijah the prophet came, or this person revealed to him that he was Elijah the prophet, or it was decided in heaven. In any case, a person that can withstand such a terrible test of taking a a bad guest, and not only not getting angry, but treating him in such a nice way without any response, any positive reaction, as this person deserves <clears throat> that the Baal Shem Tov should be born through him, taking a bad guest. And you'll see when you, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know who's watching this, but anyone who's watching it that does have a house and does invite guests, uh, there are a few things that are more irritating than having a bad guest. A bad guest. And here, the um, maybe there's nothing more irritating, but any case, this, so <clears throat> that was one of the tests that he took in this person. And of course, it says also that taking in guests is like taking the Shekhinah. We learned from Abraham that he was talking to God after he was circumcised, that, that God came to comfort him, and he was talking to God, and then Vayera love the oil, and all of a sudden he saw these three angels that he didn't know that they were angels. He thought they were guests, and he ran to meet them. He left God's presence. It's because taking in guests is such a good thing. <clears throat> okay, I mean, essentially we're all guests over here, and we're, all, we're actually not such good guests when you think about it with the God, and He treats us nice. So to treat our guests, bad guests, nicely is an unusual thing. Okay, that's one story. A second story is. And this is no less impressive, to me, any case, that uh, Elijah the prophet came to the Baal Shem Tov's father and before he was born, and he said, I am Elijah the prophet. I am willing, the, the Baal Shem Tov's father was a, a, a Kabbalist, and to a Kabbalist, the people who learn the secrets of God, there's nothing more valuable than to understand that a new secret, a new mystery of what God is. So Elijah the prophet came to him and said, I am Elijah the prophet. I can reveal all the secrets to you that you want. <clears throat> but on one condition, you did something on your bar mitzvah. Right after your bar mitzvah, you did something that um, made a big noise in all the highest heavens. And But nobody knows what it is. You did some sort of a deed that rocked all of the highest levels of the, the heavens, the angels, the souls. <clears throat> but no one knows what this is. If you tell me what this was that you did, 
is I'll reveal any secrets that you want. And he said back to him, no, this, what I did is between me and God. And you can give me all the, the, the spiritual, physical, it goes without saying, or spiritual rewards in the world, and I'm not going to, to break that connection, <clears throat> secret connection that I have with God, this deed that I did. <clears throat> I'm not going to go. So he promised him all sorts of things. No way. I'm not going to tell him. What I did is between me and God. I don't want anybody to know about it. <clears throat> and he said, okay, and the merit of that, you're going to have a son, the Baal Shem To this day, we don't know what it was. The merit of that is you're going to have a son, the Baal Shem Tov, and the son, the Baal Shem Tov was born. So these are two things which <clears throat> are very instructive to us because we can embody these things. Number one, not to get aggravated at, at people, and not just not to get aggravated, but actually do things to people, do good things to or for people that aggravate us. Number one. And number two, that there should be things in our life, perhaps everything, that our main interest is that it's between us and God. I don't want any rewards. I don't want any heaven. I don't want any revelations. I don't want to just that I could do a good thing only for God. This is a unique thing, which the angels certainly don't have. The angels are all screaming and advertising. And every person wants to be, you know, picture in a paper, <clears throat> some recognition, make a dinner or something like that. Just between me and God, this is a very deep and genuine thing. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, you know, this person is supposed to call me back and they're not. So we'll do the yom yom also. There we go. Let's go.